good evening, or whatever time it is where uh, you happen to be at this time. Um, I want to let you know today we're going to have some graphic material on here in forms of a, a mutilated animal. And so if that is not suitable for your stomach, um, how about a cognac or uh, whatever you need at that time. Um, the opening shot was actually from um, a, a photograph that a family member of mine took. They were up in, on Mount Rainier and uh, just happened to run into something um, that was taken off. Originally it was thought to be a sign, but in the meantime, We've looked at it a little closer and examined it, and it was definitely not a sign. And a friend that you've met, Kanashiba Shan, was on a bus going east of the mountain and saw it take off. So um, that's our opening, to sh our opening shot um, from somewhere at Mount Rainier. A few weeks ago, we had a, a friend visiting us. Um, he pretty much traveled the world. Um, his name is uh, we, we call him Fox, but his name is Chris, and he was really nice enough to come back and visit us with us again. One of the things that we thought we would talk to you about today, some of the mutual friends that we have, and, um, and that's how we're going to take you from frequencies to secret um, projects to mutilated, a, a mutilated cow, and our friend Tim Clarkson will be real pleased with this one because it is so genuine. So enjoy. So I'm going to introduce you again to um, Fox. Chris, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Lynn. Do you have a nice journey back here? I had a very nice journey. The weather was different today. Sun was shining. And uh, there's not a lot of sun here in Washington, but when it shines... Uh, it shines. It catches the colors and uh, it's beautiful. That's like everything we do. We either do or we don't. And that's why today's show's name uh, is named uh, Ready or Not. So whether you're into it or believe it or not, it's going to rain on your parade either way you go. That's right. That? Yeah. That's right. Uh, we have lots of inserts. I need to set up for that. Um, we have mutual friends in Grand Junction. That's right. We have a friend named Tim. We have a friend named Tim. And uh, Tim was the driving force behind my being out here. And... Uh, I'd just like to mention Tim down there in Grand Junction to thank him very much for the the, uh, the faith in, in having me out here. And without Tim, then I would not be sat here with Lillian right now. So thank you, Tim. Without Tim, I wouldn't be sitting here. And I want to comment on something. If you hear some noises, we have noises again. And I'm not really sure who's walking on the roof at this tall building. So that's not unusual. Uh, can you hear that? I can hear that. Uh, I wish they'd come down here and make themselves more clear in front of the cameras. It'll never happen because then, then we, <laughs> we could prove what we're talking about here. Well, anyway, and on top of that, we have a, another friend, and I've been teasing you with Bill Ramsey. Bill Ramsey is the gentleman that has the equipment that measures the frequency in Earth's atmosphere and space itself. And going with the flow, as flow has it, Mr. Bill Ramsey was not available for the interview that I promised you, so we pulled a, we pulled a quickie. And we substituted Bill Ramsey for John Hutchinson. And you had never heard of John Hutchinson before? Um, I'd heard of him, and only while being out here was I able to... I have not been lucky enough yet to meet him. Um, I wish to meet with him very much one day. Mm -hmm. The sooner the better. And um, I was aware of him and some of the work that he's doing. And I think together with Bill Ramsey, uh, Bill Ramsey is from Grand Junction, Colorado. Um, John Hutchinson is in uh, Vancouver, Canada. Mm -hmm. And he, John Hutchinson was recently arrested. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I want to take it from there because I have it in writing. Okay. Okay. Um, arrested how? What, what a cliffhanger here. So let me tell the rest of the part and then please continue. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, we get right. real carried away. We, we get real fired up here and we're then we just talk over each other. Go ahead. We're too busy listening to the noises on the roof. That too, yeah. Yes. Um, where were we? Yes, Bill Ramsey in uh, Grand Junction, as Lillian told, is doing a lot of work with gravity mm -hmm. sound waves. Now... Yeah. 
this is all about frequency vibration in that everything vibrates, the universe vibrates, the planets mm -hmm. vibrate, the universes vibrate, we vibrate, mm -hmm. everything vibrates. The studio vibrates. <laughs> studio, studio vibrates. Yeah. Um, of course, vibration causes sound. Um, now, sound is perceived differently by different people and, of course, animals have a they're tuned into a different frequency. We know that uh, before earthquakes happen, that many animals will show strange behavior, and many days before an earthquake will happen. Mm -hmm. And all of us, we perceive those frequencies differently. That's right. Um, I want to remind our friends that we did cover, uh, we had a frequency show. It was called um, uh, Take to Aspen and call me in the AM in which show we did play a very, very short audio um, piece from Bill Ramsey and we intend to um, do that for you a little, a little later on this program also. Now, John Hutchinson was, uh, he, he's a friend of Brenda Roberts, uh, my friend that produced 300 shows in Seattle called Journey and she was uh, gracious enough as always to let us use some of her inserts. I'd like to give you a little background. Um, even though John was on, on uh, the ghost show on Fox television the other day, they didn't really explain that. Mr. Hutchinson works with uh, Tesla coils. That's right. And he, he is working with Tesla Energy. And at one time he had a very elaborate um, laboratory in Canada. And then eventually uh, one of the European governments, I believe was Germany, they wanted to finance further research, and then, of course, um, it, his equipment was confiscated. Eventually, it was returned, but not totally. Um, some of the major pieces were missing, and that forced him to go and work out of his kitchen sink, like most of us people that don't have any money. And, and so, it, the inserts from John Hutchinson is from two different shows, so that's why Brenda changes clothes in the middle of the clip. So I just want to make you aware of that. And um, he levitates things. Um, he can raise uh, 64 pounds off the table, and he also works with frequencies, and that's why we have chosen him to substitute for Mr. Ramsey. And Bill don't know it, but one day, both of them is going to be here and do this interview. Three weeks ago, we got an email, and uh, lo and behold, Mr. Hutchinson got arrested again, or they attempted to, and the reason was he had just done another experiment, and the neighbors, um, things in the neighbors' houses was levitating. And so they, they got upset with him because everything was floating, and they called the police, but in the meantime, they have returned, um, you know, his homemade equipment that he has. So, do you have anything to add to that or should we go to that first clip? I think let's, let's see the first clip and then introduce the, the audience to some of John Hutch Hutchinson's work mm -hmm. and uh, take it from there. Yeah, actually, um, when I imported Journey TV, we showed you both of the show in 1995, except now we're more advanced as a, as a whole. So, some of you might remember that. So, if we can go to that clip. And the interviewer is Brenda Roberts from Journey TV. Yep. It'll be fun to watch him again. We've shown you work that John has been doing for the past 20 years. And we want to yet introduce you to some more of his work in another segment on Journey. And that's going to be concerning crystal converters. But as we close, we will give you an explanation of the Hutchison effect from physicist Tom Bearden. Uh, John Hutchinson in Canada, Vancouver, Canada. Hutchinson takes two Tesla coils and uh, essentially puts in the center of them a target, which and every target has certain nonlinearities, and then blasts away with these two coils at them. Basically, what he establishes is an electromagnetic fighting itself, electromagnetic forces fighting themselves. And gravitational force is made when a gravitational potential is made when electromagnetic forces fight themselves to a draw. When, in other words, the gradients become zero. The, uh, the gradient vectors or the resultants become zero, but the two forces are still in there slugging it out. All the energy is still going. The work is still going, but it's trapped locally. That's internal energy. That's what gravity is. 
And the Whitaker paper tells very well how to do that. So when John got things just right, he didn't have control of it, absolute control, but we, he bored in there with persistence. And when he got things just right to get the forces to fight to a draw, and there was the right nonlinearity in the target, he would have levitation of things, even 64 pounds. And running. Well, I've had the lab started up in early 70s, then I was found out in 19, the effects started happening in 1979. Mm -hmm. And Alexis Pizarro, who I give credit to, found mm -hmm. my research and then right. promoted it to the U.S. Mm -hmm. government. Um, and other scientists, and that was quite a pace of activity for the last 10 10, 11 years of scientists coming and Quite, going. And yeah. Seven, about 750 demonstrations, but oh. not all to scientists. Uh -huh. Some media people would come in. And hey, we came in. We're going to show some samples on your floor in your apartment and let you explain the, the okay. other effects that happened with those. Okay. So we'll go to that. <laughs> Here's, there's your floor covered with all these well, samples Well, this is, yes, I pulled out uh, a lot of samples. Here's a, a aluminum piece that has, uh, didn't want to separate, but blew up in, from with inside. And um, I'm reaching over here for a huge piece of, of aluminum run bar stock, two inches. And it appears that it exploded outward like well, if you've seen the movie Alien, yeah, like the alien <laughs> popped out of there or something. <laughs> it's a crude way of putting it, but uh, many <clears> different <throat> effects from the jelly molding, shaking mm -hmm. to pulling apart to almost disintegrating, huh? To disintegrate. And then some of like you observed before, and it was tested. Now, what happened here? So I'm demonstrating a what they call a large scale monopole as called by the scientific community. And one end of this is highly man magnetic, and the other end is this zero. There's nothing on it. So that was one of the effects after yeah. being in your target zone. Yes, written up in uh, Extraordinary Physics by Thomas E. Bearden, and large-scale monopolar activity. And, uh, and you can explain all the different metals and plastics and everything that, you know, you, okay. you've experimented on. All right. <clears throat> that sounds good. Well, here we have, uh, the first test was an ordinary empty milk crate. It takes off in a bit of an arc. <clears throat> this is about 1988 time period, when I had about five effects Just per hour. Just flies off, yeah. all right. Here we have uh, Whoa. two things going off uh -huh. at one time. We have now a uh, wooden bowl and a small tool or some kind on the other side there that... Uh, so if we watch on the left, that tool's going to fly away, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, there, there's a bowl first. <laughs> there's a bowl. Oh, well, he gets free. Okay, there's a sheet of plastic, a blue plastic object there, about an eighth of an inch thick, and it eventually takes off. And we have some foam and plastic material, an empty vitamin bottle. He, he takes off, and um, there he goes. That lift off, as Jack Hauk would say. And we got some a wrench. Oh, that's in, a wrench. Yeah, those are that's that's a pretty heavy. The, yep. <laughs> yeah, there it goes. <laughs> it flies away like it's just a feather. Here we have some stainless steel bars that uh, sort of rubbery but, and almost lifting off. This one is just wiggling around a little bit like a snake looking oh. at you. No, he wants to take off. What do you think is going on? Is it being attracted or pulled no, 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 by something? It's, or? it's interdimensional. And here, here we have water. Now, we would ice. assume this is boiling, but there's no heat, is there? No, and it's also in a wooden bowl and also on a wooden plank, as I recall, this, this experiment. So this would be just the effect of, of the water itself, the molecules yeah. interacting. Huh? Yeah. Area, but we'll repeat again. There's, there's been no heat. Nothing gets hot. No. It does not boil. Or mm, you see no steam coming off. Of right. Because even the metal never exhibits any heat, does it? No, it's cold. Now here we have what they call the breathing effect, which is very rare, but was captured on this particular incident in the, on an empty uh, bleach bottle. And you see, there's a compression. Either there's um, the molecules of air are being compressed and, and expanded 
as much like the metals. It, cre it makes it look animated, like it's coming alive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of the scientists even speculate that this energy has an intelligence to it. Does it? Yeah. So. On the high levels in the U.S. government, guys. Here we have a piece, another piece of stainless. Um, uh -huh. He starts to wiggle around a little bit like a snake, meaning that it's turned quite rubbery and is affected by the fields, or the fields affected, set up resonances. Is that probably the molecules themselves make it changing? It's on the atomic, it's on the subatomic level, basically, these effects. Um, here we have a piece of um, aluminum that wants to separate itself from its whole self. And other samples along there are large pieces of aluminum. And, and so that uh, breaks apart. Yeah, that slowly is magically you used to have to sit and fine tune the equipment some nickels nickel steel i believe yes and uh, then it, these large heavy solid objects then you know would just start shattering and yeah. pulling apart in the early days it was kind of like one effect a day or something but now or in 88 and 89 it's, it was five per hour so there was a <clears throat> more control ability at that point in time after several years of testing. Mm -hmm. A lot of more, a lot less more control. I see once again, is the water being attracted out it's or being, it, forced it, up? It, 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 <laughs> yeah, it can almost lift it. So it actually uh -huh. has lifted out, but this on this particular case, it's just grabbing at it and then trying to get it out. And uh, what's coming out of there is like little round balls of it. Here's a huge piece of foil, tin foil. And when it takes off, I believe there's a set of lamps sitting on the table, and a light bulb will go out, too. This calls out of there and takes off. So there's a light bulb well, there was in that carton on the left. There's an empty bucket I decided uh -huh. to put on the test on the test table. You might get drenched if you put water in <laughs> And there goes the light bulb goes the light right bulb. out of the carton. Yeah. yeah. Now we get into yogurt. We're getting desperate for samples. So we go <laughs> You'll try anything. Yeah. Lab refrigerator and then yeah. put this stuff out. I believe it was a frosty, and uh, as you can see, that's almost like a. Um, there's a gravity coming up, field coming up this way, and um, is pulling this this piece up. And it's interesting because eventually it takes the whole cup along with it. As you can is see, the idea that this target it's area has its own <laughs> field then going on yeah. within it? And sometimes samples will join together. Mm -hmm. In this particular, in this particular case, okay. Now we have a carrot. Well, I had to, I had to do this. I had to put a carrot in <laughs> there. Try vegetables here. And then it just nicely cut itself in two. Probably due to the water, um, mm -hmm. water distortion. It's like. <laughs> Oh, this, this is one amazing shot. Mm -hmm. Now, how much does that weigh? That's about six, what, 60 pounds. That's a cannonball, right? That's a can old cannonball. And alongside that is a, a nail puller. Now, this cannonball, what's going to happen here? It's, it, it's gently, I mean, it's just like it's floating. It's like it's, like it's floating, but also there's, with this particular uh, sample, there's uh, movements that are not, they almost look man-made which is kind of, kind of interesting. As if the field was actually the field would go out and there was some kind of intelligence, intelligence behind it or a little man behind there with a, <laughs> with a stick welded on to the cannonball. But See, it turns. <clears throat> it'll turn this way on its axis and it'll turn the opposite way. So it's not really consistent. It's fairly erratic in its movements, isn't it? Very much so. And it doesn't seem to conform to the other um, test samples. But it was fascinating, and as you see, there's no camera jiggling. I, I had to put it down. So the camera is sitting still. Oh, it's sitting still in this one, uh, except for a few shots. But uh, you're getting into weight like that here, it gets dangerous. So we had, I think it was a thousand pound transformer go off about an inch off the ground. and went back down and shook the foundations. But Oop, there, there that there goes, goes. He took uh -huh. off. He took a while, but then when he went, he went fast. Yeah, right up. <laughs> Gee. No, the cannonball is still wobbling around there. 
and then yeah. it turns a little faster. But you see, the funny part about this is that it even stops and reverses its movements. Whereas if it was out in zero gravity, if it would just be going like this very slowly. Yeah, <clears> it, <throat> but here it, it goes from one side to the other. Yeah. It reverses itself. It, it, it looks like it's a, um, a lot of interference, well, probably a lot of interference. Ben Hutchinson uh, from Canada, and um, and he has visited you again. It, it's really amazing what we can do. And so, wh what it is, uh, one of the other things. Um, uh, we have an echo. How about that? It's just one of those one of those strange days. Um, so, to show you what things can be done with, with um, anti-gravity and frequencies, because that's what he combines. So, would you like to um, would you like to tell a little bit about your visit to um, to Bill's house? Yes, uh, I was lucky enough to meet with Bill, and Bill gives everyone his best regards. He's unable to be here because he's uh, traveling. In Florida. He's traveling to Florida, yeah. yes. Um, very, very interesting man. And his work is very much in line with that of John, John Hutchinson's. Um, although, as we mentioned earlier, Bill is, um, well, in his house, actually, he has a, an array of receivers which um, receive a live flow of uh, incoming information from the world and universe around us. I called it noise, and he was very upset about that. <laughs> it was music. <laughs> Lillian calls it noise, and mm -hmm. it's it's to give you an idea of the noise. It's it's not white noise. It's it's a very very low frequency sound, uh, which some people describe as, if you like. Uh, glass cutting into the head. Lillian we'll play said, some after a while. Good, so the viewers yeah. out there will hear some of it. Yeah, see, now I, can, I cannot even go close to Bill's house. Well, you see, you're on a different level. <laughs> and a different frequency. Different That's frequency. The whole thing. Different mm -hmm. frequency. Yeah. Now, we all do vibrate, and I personally have um, been lucky enough to spend a lot of time mm -hmm. with Bill. Um, in his house, and I love the sound. Mm -hmm. When I listen to the sound, I get drawn into it, and it's it's a meditation thing. You really have to switch the mind off and get into it. And when you get into it and accept that noise, then you can, to a large extent, you can see pictures within that sound. Mm -hmm. And then you have other sounds coming in on that frequency. Well, the sounds are always there, but um, in normal everyday life, if we were to listen to all the incoming sounds, we'd go crazy. That's my punchline right here. We would go crazy. Um, and that's actually what's happening to some of us because of these uh, um, sounds that are uh, bombarding us from everywhere. Now, the, the next clip we, I like to set up for is also with Brenda Roberts, and that is um, part of the show that she produced where they talk about frequencies. And then at the end of that clip, you will show some of the equipment that Mr. Hutchinson um, has left because, it, like we said, they took so much of it. And it's pretty much what uh, the equipment that Mr. Ramsey uh, works with. So you can put a, you know, put a sort of picture on that. So if we could go to that clip right now, and so the friends can get a general idea about you know, what that looks like. Well, unit that's actually got a... Okay, yeah, meter on there. crystalline yeah. structure in, in crystals and minerals. Mm -hmm. uh, we use quartz crystals in uh, watches and in computers and all sorts of applications, yeah, don't we? Quartz, quartz itself was used in radio as mm -hmm. um, as uh, for freak, fine frequencies because it vibrates. Mm -hmm. You have to excite it for it to vibrate, and it's called the piezoelectric effect. But you want to um, tune your interest to cell, what they call self-reactive materials. One mm -hmm. prime example of that is barium titanate that is self-reactive material and has ferromagnetic properties and piezoelectric properties. And, so uh, we're discovering even the minerals and the rocks around us are 
are oh. vibrating. They're like alive, aren't they? Yeah, everything's alive. Everything is in motion. T uh, Townsend Brown of Stanford mm -hmm. University uh, was able to draw voltage from rocks in through computer controls can actually be used to rearrange the um, genetic code. Uh, applications like that are already going on in the United States at MDI and other uh, locations in California. Well, does that indicate and that our bodies have a certain electrical magnetic uh, charge to them? Oh yeah, even even in our brain there's what they call weak nucleic acids which are, are magnetic and have magnetic properties. So applying a certain <laughs> frequency may then interact with our own frequency and oh. maybe help balance something now, out that's like on a skew? <laughs> yeah, that's, no, that's true. That uh -huh. either can balance balance what is on a skew, uh, rearrange the electrobiochemistry of a person, mm -hmm. or if it's used in dangerous ways, can actually cause people to have, be agitated, nervous, mm -hmm. and have mental breakdowns. Now, they're determining that's, two certain frequencies do that. They, they are agitating, even though we can't uh, even hear them mm -hmm. or sense that they're occurring. They they're there nonetheless they're invisible <laughs> they're invisible there. from basically from elf then to mm -hmm. into microwaves and a prime example of a microwave antenna is a pine needle mm -hmm. it's a simple pine needle resonates to the stuff coming from space and this is not healthy for our trees well, and that not would, healthy for us certain that parts would bombard of us. those trees and start shaking the pine needles off oh well, it, it interferes with the electrobiochemistry uh -huh. of the of the of the trees. trees growth itself and their communications between the trees uh, their communications uh, yeah. through pheromones and that. Um, within our cells, we have areas that are agitated by microwave energy. Um, prime example is all the cell phone use of mm -hmm. people getting tumors in the, mm. in the brain yeah. and that. But still, Perhaps the very. It's not really good for our bodies to be interacting with machines too much, huh? <laughs> no, unless you're in, in a healthy range of frequencies. Mm -hmm. And there is a healthy range of frequencies, and so that might imply uh, assisting us if we're in a disease state, which is probably an unhealthy range of frequencies. Or you could actually tune uh, uh -huh. on a signal generator a very fine frequency for a particular virus, mm -hmm. as done by Dr. Royal Rife in the 1930s. Isn't it amazing mm -hmm. that this work has been going on for so many years, and it continues to pop up, but... Yeah, hopefully, it's popping up now, and it's going to hang around and finally be usable. It seems it seems so more and more in this day and age that mm -hmm. uh, the recognition of these uh, force fields and, and uh, electromagnetics and electrostatics and magnetic fields are indeed uh, applicable to um, many curing many health mm -hmm. problems. Well, of course, my apartment is And here you are. <laughs> well, now I'm explaining some of the receivers I use for monitoring uh, signals out in, in the environment. I think we're not, in general, yellow. aware of how much signals are all around us. It's As you're pointing out with all this equipment, mm -hmm. what are the range of signals out there that we're constantly surrounded by? Right down to d uh, d direct current right up to, right up, up to cosmic rays right up to the cosmic ray. So I have here a fair collection of equipment that can monitor each section of this as... Um, so is there a lot of activity going on? Yeah. So when you flip oh, yeah. those switches on and yeah. you're just seeing all sorts of waves, right? It, all the way up, continuous from zero up to way into the gigahertz, right up into the cosmic rays. And then I, when I need getting that high in cosmic radiation, then I have to resort to uh, Geiger counters. Mm -hmm to collect that kind of information and, and with x-rays uh, then again other special equipments and um, there's one piece there that is goes up to 44 gigahertz from 10 megacycles and that covers that section of the electromagnetic spectrum and i'm t going down here to show a uh, well, we have fantastic devices recording that are... device mm -hmm. 42 channel input on on that, where I can pour in the. Uh, well, so you can capture the data there. Oh yeah, I have all, all the right. all yeah. the all the equipment to capture the data and store it. X oh. Y plotters and uh, chart recorders. And I'm walking through here, looking at some RF generation equipment, which I like to experiment with, um, producing effects with radio frequencies. And. Um, I'm now pointing to some more RF generation equipment, U.S. Army equipment from Ohio. 
and um, it puts out uh, at least a couple hundred watts. And there's a, uh, another receiver, Army receiver. As we walk around here, realize that you know the the waves that are surrounding us to all frequencies. You know, we're walking through it and just existing in it all the time. We've got it's a lot amazing. of satellites out there, too, that are beaming waves at us all the time, aren't they? Not only satellites, but you've got satellites, you've got thunderstorms, you've got meteorites mm -hmm. that hit in there, and the ham radio operators can pick up even the signature mm -hmm. of the meteorites mm -hmm. hitting into the, uh, into the, in the air there. And there's the uh, HARP project up in Alaska, mm -hmm. which now has added uh, more um, RF to the, the threshold of, uh, now what? You have it. The name of the show is Ready or Not. Um, I hope this has shown you that um, we've, people have been doing this for a long time. On the table we have a media right, so we know they are there. Um, I was telling you yesterday a few, I think it was about a year ago, so Mercury had been retrograde. And some of the people heard this noise like a, uh, um, a fire engine. And to the point where they went outside to see what it was. And then it got more intense and more intense. And your meditative music turned out to be Mercury going the other way. And Bill Ramsey is the one that clarified that for us. Yes, Bill Ramsey is uh, making recordings mm -hmm. of uh, the different sounds that reach us, mm -hmm. uh, the different configurations of the planets, um, because as the planets um, configure, and do their own thing, each send out mm -hmm. a different frequency. And he's compiling uh, tapes of that. Mm -hmm. And um, he hopes to go further, and I wish him the best of luck with it. He's on to a very, very uh, mm -hmm. good thing. And I think the one day when together they will meet, or he will meet with John Hutchison, then I think it can only be a very, very good thing. Uh, we, um, I want to warn um, some of the frequency friends about the, the audio we're getting ready to play. That is actually some of the things that Bill Ramsey picks up. Now, keep in mind, it causes headaches and pain in some of us. And so it, we're not going to do it very long just to show the friends what is out there and what it sounds like. And when you are a very sensitive person, that low frequency is really, um, it has to do fibromyalgia and everything. What, and, hmm? I'm sorry to interrupt you, we're talking about what's out there. I'd like to know what's dumping on the roof at the moment. It's been here, it's been here since we got here. And my, mm -hmm. our friend here, that Chris from Greenville, um, sent us, he's not doing well either. He just lost his air. air. That's, I was looking for another word, but yes, much more appropriate. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Good. So could we, for just a very, very short time, play that audio? Uh, Am I right with that? You are correct mm -hmm. with that. And um, as I said earlier, in order to appreciate the sound, you, you really have to close your mind off to the outside sounds. When you have a confliction of uh, resonance, mm -hmm. then uh, that alters the sound. And when I listen to this, as I think many of the viewers perhaps will find, you can get drawn into it. And you s it's very strange, and it's this is a universal sound. Right now, I don't have a mind <laughs> because it's, I can feel it leaving. Yeah. 
Lillian's very, very sensitive, sensitive to this. Sensitive, yeah. I hear flies on the wall. She was actually staying with Bill um, for a while and... Actually, two hours. Two hours? Yes, and he shut everything down for me. Okay. He did. Okay. When I was with him, he said, Oh, Lillian, she, she didn't like the sound at all. Yeah. Uh, animals, I, I know I couldn't play for my for my um, cat either, but the thing is here, we, this, these are the things that bombard the earth on a constant basis, and I think that's why we have so many um, painful joints and, and um, heart palpitations and things like that. And there's actually a couple of his, oh, he's going to do it again. Well, what do you know? <laughs> Lillian's going to go crazy. Oh, yeah, pretty soon I'm going to lose it, but that's OK. So just in case they missed it the first time. Um, it, it's, it's sort of bothering me. Maybe we need to quit now. <laughs> oh, well, this is have fun with me today. But you've been learning a lot of things since you came to visit, haven't you? I've been learning uh, very many things, mm -hmm. um, both from yourself and uh, the other people that I have been mm -hmm. lucky enough to, to meet while being out here. And life goes on, and um, life is a journey, and it is interesting to, to meet the people along the way. Um, to be out here, in the United States, um, it's kind of strange for me. Yeah, I've been here 30 years, and I still go to culture shock on a regular basis. Well, I've been here just two months now, and the the whole style of life, the people, mm -hmm. everything is a lot, lot different. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm from Europe, and Europe, um, and don't get the wrong idea, I'm not saying one is better than the other, I'm just making a, a comparison. Different. They are different. Um, Europe is full of many, many differing countries, mm -hmm. um, different languages, of course, um, different religions, and different belief systems. And here in the States, it's a pretty young country still. Mm -hmm. And I get the impression that, that out here, people are still trying to find their feet. Um, what do I mean by that? Well. Yeah, what do you mean by that? <laughs> what I mean by that is culture is ingrained in uh, all of us. Mm -hmm. um, and culture forms a large part of our belief systems, be it by um, choice or not. Mm -hmm. Now, we cannot get away from the country to which we belong. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, but some of us belong to nobody. Some of us belong to nobody. Right. <laughs> and uh, we are still trying to find our I identity. And uh, that is what makes life so very, very interesting. I wanted to return to this, uh, the sounds that we just heard, in that uh, there are now military applications uh, for this. There's a lot of research being done. Um, we all know of microwave energy. and. Um, the research being done now, a lot of which, of course, is secret, as are so many things out here. Um, well, this energy is being used as uh, pulse waves, which, when directed at an object, is able to disintegrate that object. So we are now at the ex extent where we are able to destroy satellites, um, by sending pulse wen wave energy out to those satellites. Which, in the old days, so to speak, if we wanted to destroy something in the Earth's atmosphere or out in space, the popular thinking was to send a missile up there. Mm -hmm. Well, we can send missiles up there, but those missiles can be shot down and try shooting down a sound wave. That's very correct. Uh, the friends are familiar with Project Hobbs in Alaska. We have Project Woodpecker closer to us, uh, and this is being taped in Washington State. So, um, Oregon is not too far from here. No, it's a stone throw away. Mm -hmm. And then, of, of course, there's a lot of information available from, from the internet. That's right. Um, you can go to my webpage, and some of those, um, some of the links are there. 
we have books here on the table, the, uh, the Serious Mystery and the, um, the Palladian Mission. Those are, um, I, I believe this, the, the, I believe the Serious Mystery is, is not channeled. It, it's a, what I mean by channeled, channeled is when someone gives you the information to write down uh, on a t from a telepathic point of view. And I think there's a very many uh, historical facts in this book. The Palladian Mission is written by Randolph Winters and Elena uh, Smith um, has several shows with Randy here. And he documented the Billy Meyer story from, from Switzerland. That's right. Um, and he's, he's a gentleman that was in, in uh, contact with the Pleiades and has thousands of uh, pictures of, of aircrafts. I've actually, uh, there are many books on the market, as uh, you all know. And the whole market out there is swamped with a lot and lot of literature. And as Lillian told, uh, the internet, without saying, is full and full of information. But uh, can we believe that information? Uh, personally, I feel that many, many things on the internet um, are, well, is not the real truth. There's a lot, a lot of disinformation out there. And so, when we're walking through life, then we have to keep the balance, keep the balance of mind. Um, now, it's very easy, um, I can say I was speaking with our cameraman yesterday, and uh, he was talking about this exactly in that we all have a path in life. That's right. And uh, if we go off that tangent, there are things along the way that, that take us off that path. And it is good to have a direction in life or to have a goal. And we all get diverted along the way. And as I mentioned in the, in the last show we had, there are signposts out there. So whether we decide to follow them or not is pretty much to, up to us. Yeah, that's correct. And then uh, a lot of this can be applied to, to a spiritual, to a spiritual level. And uh, well, let's get away from the comfort of the spiritual level for a minute here, uh, if you will. At the beginning of the show, we had mentioned that we would have a little graphic material in here and uh, it, in fact, it is you that ended up uh, in an area uh, on public lands. That's right. Um, I'll let you tell that story. We're going to play this insert without the, without audio, so you can talk right through it. And I want to warn you, it is graphic. It, it shows a mutilated animal. Jim Clarkson and I, we told you about the, um, the horse that was local. And, um, but it is so, pre so precise, so... Um, we want to go there first and then eventually get back into the comfort zone here. So if we can have that um, insert without audio, then you can explain okay. the whole thing. There we go. Here well, we go. here we were in uh, Utah, and uh, as Lily mentioned, we were on public land, this being of great importance uh, because when you are in a military area, if you are to go over that uh, the fence, then uh, many horrible things could happen to you. Now, we'd climbed a mountain and uh, overlooking this area, you can see our truck just parked outside. They did, Lillian did not. <laughs> Lillian did not, but we were there for one hour and there was no sign of life available. And I was thinking everyone was at lunch. But um, if you look closely, I think you might just see it coming into view now. Yep. Here comes the, uh, the black vehicle. And at this point, uh, we picked it up from a distance coming towards us, and we, you know, we put two and two together and started rapidly to descend the, the small mountain that we'd climbed. Um, while not knowing if, what the outcome was going to be, so to speak. Now, here we were being watched. We were watching them, they were watching us. And, uh, it was an interesting moment. This is a cow. Now, the cattle mutilations I'll speak a little bit about just afterwards. But this cow we found some maybe five miles from that scene. If you look at the jaw, there's a fraction, open fracture here on the top of the jaw. Um, 
the skin is cut around the jaw uh, in a very straight line. Yeah, and like a laser cut. Like a laser. And try telling me that's scavengers. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. It's not. Uh, there you can see the holes clearly where the teeth have been removed. Um, this is very common in the animal mutilation cases. Uh, that carcass uh, is covered. The, the white stuff is where the birds uh, did their job, so to speak. And um, that was a very interesting. Uh, that was a very interesting thing to come across. Yeah. Now, when when Jim Clarkson and I covered that. Uh, one of the things is that it occurs in, actually there's three locations where this occurs. There's pickup in the actual place where... Um yes, uh, what happens is is that uh, it's not only cows, but uh, horses, cats, dogs. Right, yeah, we had a horse. People also, it does happen to people. I have seen uh, pictures of uh, when this has happened to people. And um, what is happening is debatable, and uh, these animals are taken. There are eyewitness reports to this, and they are found with no footprints around the body. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, now, many of these animals are, some, many are missing genitalia, and also tongues. Eyes are taken out also. And as was yeah, it, not just eyes, the whole eye socket. That's mm -hmm. right. The whole eye socket is actually cored around. That's right. Um, also, skin is cut from those animals from the jaw area, and um, from various parts of the body, showing no signs of burning. Uh, this is using technology which we're told we're not in possession of this, but w the real technology is out there. We are actually some, I believe, some. 30 to 40 years behind the real technology that exists. So that's something else completely there. Mm -hmm. now, now, I'm not even sure if that was you, so correct me if I'm wrong. At one time you worked for a mortuary, am I correct? Again? At one time you worked for a mortuary, am I correct? Well, uh, yes or no? Uh, no, no. I, I, I didn't work for a mortuary. I was always interested. Uh, in pathology, in forensic okay, pathology. That's, yeah, that's what it was. Now, so in your opinion, based on that, um, now when when we when we find these these animals somewhere, there is no. I can't say that word. That's why I asked you. What is it called metamor? Met oh, you're the English teacher. Metamor. Metamorphosis. Oh, me. Thank you. Is that the word? No, metamorphosis is. Um, we use that with uh, pupae when it turns into a butterfly. That say it's a transition no, phase. No, that's when when rigor mortis is. That's yeah, what rigor mortis. It, that's what I mean. I'm a foreigner. Not to worry. <laughs> uh, yeah, rigor mortis, the stiffening of. It's, of but it's not present, no. It's uh, it's not present, and uh, these animals show normally, regarding on conditions, of course, mm -hmm. uh, there is putrefaction, or use another word, decomposition, where the, the body breaks down. Mm -hmm. It is broken down by, by heat, uh, insect activity. Maggots are very, very quick in dissolving carcasses. Now, this, this animal that we found, uh, along with the hundreds, thousands of other cases out there, um, show no real signs of decomposition. Yeah. Now, Lillian, perhaps on a program in the past, I believe, mentioned something about the fish in the pond. Did you mention that in the past? Yeah, we've, we've sort of covered that, but that was totally different. That was totally different. Okay, well, yeah. there are strange things going on out there. These animals also are found um, without fluids in the body, mm -hmm. and they do exhibit signs of being dropped from a height. And they are being taken, genetic material is being taken from them, uh, again, that's not only animals. There are thousands and thousands of missing children every year. And, you know, we can account for a large number of these children, but there are many secret things going on. Maybe. That's maybe. Yeah, I'm glad you added that. We don't want to put out there that our children are being taken. That's not what we meant. No, I didn't mean to scare anyone. Um, there's, there's no real proof of that as such, so. Yeah, so, so no, uh, you just strike that all together. 
So what happens is, um, no, when you went to the fish here, the fish, that was caused by <laughs> an algae. The, the, there was a siding and the, the fish got, the, the cause of death was a microwave energy that heated the water in the, um, in the pond and the higher level of uh, activity in some algae. And then when they were removed, they looked like they were sort of microwaved and fried. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so, so we, have, we have talked about that. And so either way, um, name the show is ready or not. And uh, we sometimes we do talk about these things because they do exist. They do exist, and uh, you know, if Lily and I appear strange in the studio at the moment, and everything appears a little awry, then uh, it's these uh, frequencies bouncing uh, through us at the moment. That's right. I've been through a lot. I've heard all these frequencies, and there is a really, um, there is a noise in here. There is a noise mm -hmm. in here, um, and there's a noise on the roof sometimes. And uh, that's a high roof. Normally, you shouldn't hear that. Is that right? But it's not unusual to have noises. My poor guy here, look at him, he's, <laughs> he isn't going to last too much longer. Yeah, he's, he's getting there. Yeah, he's getting there, he's getting kind of. But there are strange frequencies at the moment that are, that are going on. Well, you have a media, a media right in front of you, and the, so these are all conflicting frequencies bouncing, bouncing back and forth here. Now, um, is it your intention to uh, stay an investigator? Yes. Uh, I feel, I feel there is uh, a lot to be accomplished out there, or a lot yet to be investigated. Uh, when we talk about, for example, UFOs, um, the knowledge we have about what is happening at the moment, I say the knowledge as uh, common people. Um, I'm sure there are people out there that know or are privy to a lot more information than, than us. Uh, but we are still scratching the surface as to what is really happening. There is um, a little county in Illinois that is, uh, in the year 2000, put on their ballot uh, for people to vote whether they really want to be informed by the alien issue or not. And I think that's really a breakthrough that, uh, so, you know, doesn't mean we're going to find out anything. But when you travel in the circles that we do, um, nothing is really impossible, you know. Nothing is impossible, um, and um, so I'm losing thoughts here sometimes, these vibrations are getting mm -hmm. to me, but nothing is impossible. And um, returning back to the whole, to the UFO thing, um, I'd like to know where it is all leading, and that we talk about the truth being out there, well, fine, but can we handle the truth? Um, which, mm -hmm. which could perhaps be why um, let's say that a lot of information is um, kept secret there, the real truth. Well, your, your generation inherited this whole thing, you know, and, and they're looking to dump it. Uh, you know, they want to get rid of it, and I'm sure that in my lifetime, because uh, it's right in your face, it makes no difference what you believe in or what you're into. Exactly. And it's, it's right there. And now that we commercialize um, our friends here, they're green and they're purple and they're silver, um, it becomes less of a threat. Yeah, nothing, uh, we perceive uh, strange things as being dangerous. Um, That's right. Always. And um, these things, I'm not saying some of them are not dangerous. Um, these are friends here, are purple in color. It doesn't matter, maybe some of them are purple, we just haven't seen them as purple yet. But um, there's good and bad everywhere. That's right, the universe is set up on negative and positive. Negative and positive. Mm -hmm. uh, the positive vibrations, the negative vibrations. Mm -hmm. This guy's not doing so good, poor guy. I'm just going to get him by the throat. Well, he's, he's getting he, tight, he's getting, I know, see. getting hot under the studio lights. Yeah. You see, these things they're not used to, uh, being in studios under lights. So. Yeah. Perhaps that's why they're being kept underground at the moment. So you're going to stay uh, stay in the Washington area for a few days? Yes, I'll stay in the Washington area for a few days. And for the friends that need to get a hold of you, um, be okay to go to my webpage? It'd be fine, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, 
if anyone was to reach me, I'd be surprised, but um, thank you if you would be so kind. And please uh, feel free to reach me through, through Lillian. Thank mm -hmm. you for that, Lillian. Now, you, when we talked about energy shifts, we just have a very few couple of minutes left here. Um, what is your impression of the energy per se in Washington State and the Colorado area where you were, where you were because like we both believe there are some underground facilities in that area. So can you perceive the difference there? I can perceive a difference there. Um, certainly the vibrations Grand Junction, Colorado mm -hmm. are on a different frequency um, to the vibrations here in Washington. Partly due to the fact that here in, uh, in Washington State, um, you know, we have Mount St. Helens not so far away, or what That's remains right, of it. Yeah. And um, there is a lot of volcanic activity, or lava flows just under our feet at the moment, which of course has a large influence on uh, the vibrations we perceive. And uh, those vibrations do interact with us, um, and do interact with everything around us. Everything vibrates. Uh, if we look at a solid object, we perceive it as being solid. But that object is made of atoms. And uh, the electrons, neutrons inside those atoms, they're vibrating. Everything is vibrating. So nothing is as solid or as real as perhaps it seems. Yes, sometimes nothing seems uh, real. Sometimes we don't know where we are. Because I did refer you back to the time jumper. And that's my cliffhanger here. We will go to another time traveling show here in just a few weeks. In the meantime, I hope we shed a little light. Um, actually, it's more a reminder than anything that some of those things do exist and ready or not, they just, they just part of our lives and um, doesn't mean you're gonna run into animals like that or anything, but give us a call. Um, have a safe trip and uh, we'll see you again. Thank you very much. Bye. Goodbye.